Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, wherever you are, whenever you are. Thank you for watching my videos. Today I'm going to be doing the news, right? Ranting about the news and all the cool stuff that's going on in the news, right? Um, yeah, I've separated these videos into two parts and uh, really enjoying it, right? Uh, I want, I, I have a lot of lots to say all the time and I just want to cut it into pieces so that you guys can choose whether you want to watch a TA or just hear my news rants or whatever. So it's so cool. cool. All right, so let's get on with it, all right? So let's start off with so the uh, crypto bubbles, right? Uh, just remember, right? Anything I say is not financial advice, right? So just to let you know. <laughs> all righty. So we can see that uh, we're getting so pummeled on the alts here. Uh, Everything is still down for if you're looking at it on a monthly basis. Um, T fuel is the only thing that seems to be like on fire. It's on fire right um and uh that's about it i am doing i am doing right if you're missing it i am doing buy buying these cryptos like crazy i'm buying cryptos and i'm doing videos for the dj15 group holders anybody who's in the dj15 group and they want to and they have a subscription right they're getting some free videos on what i'm buying and, and uh what price i'm buying and if you're interested in that might want to check that out we're also do some trades right uh, in the group right so you want to join that if you're interested in some trades uh, on, on Bitcoin and ethereum so uh, yeah prices are gonna be going up in the week so make sure you get some get it in today before it's too late alrighty oh boy first little bit of news right um, Wow State Street set up digital unit to capitalize on crypto craze now state street you're like okay big deal right <laughs> until you read down here right state street uh, a u.s custody bank that oversees more than 40 trillion in assets is setting up a new digital division 40 trillion well at least they're not i mean there's a lot of a lot of assets that they got but it's probably mostly derivatives, right? But still, that's huge, massive. So yeah, uh, affecting the, the pressure on financial services companies to help clients trade cryptocurrencies even as regulars work out rules for the sector. There's no stopping this. Any more than if the, like a, a, a new element, right? Rain showered of, uh, of uh, meteorites, small meteorites hit the planet all over the planet, and these elements was new and never existed, and it was very useful for some sort of cool thing, right? The government can't stop you from from picking up the elements from the ground, can't stop you from getting it, no way, and they can't stop you from trading it. So, yeah, um, they have to accept it, and uh, that's. That's the world we live in. You could say that they could, they, they could block it. They could go, no. Yeah, they can. But most people are just going to ignore them. <laughs> oh, boy. Alrighty. So, MFC's legal economic issues with El Salvador's Bitcoin move. Like, nobody saw that coming. <laughs> Oh, wow. So, you know, El Salvador doesn't even have its own national currency. It's got U.S. dollars, right? And so, yeah, it, I mean, come on. You have to understand, right? Uh, the governments around the world, right, and, um, and the way our financial system is, is, is set up, right? It's an intertwine of, of fraud that works for every, that works worldwide, right? And so the International Monetary Fund, which is, which oversees the big the, this fraud and makes sure that this fraud continues helps to make sure this fraud continues because they profit majorly on that and uh, their their stakeholders as well they're not happy with this bitcoin move because now the thing is right um they can't create money to lend to el salvador they can't create bitcoin sorry let me correct that they can't create bitcoin out of nothing to lend to el salvador to help increase its infrastructure. That sucks. But they can create a bunch of dollars, right? So um, 
yeah, uh, only uh, people who uh, you know have bitcoins really make sure that they have a, a good vested interest in the projects for the country can actually invest and you know build something real, something valuable because they're not going to want to risk real money, real capital without a, for, a, a, a definite re return on investment. Whilst the IMF doesn't care, they'll just steal stuff. Okay, from you when you don't pay it back. So yeah, um, that's the difference, right? Uh, and yeah, they're gonna come. They're going to probably we're gonna find that El Salvador because it's too early, right, for El Salvador to jump in on this. We will. I wouldn't be surprised if El Salvador ends up backtracking on this Bitcoin move, right? Yeah. So who knows? Maybe their president and their their uh, their people are strong enough to fight the. Um, the globus but i doubt it i doubt it they're gonna send in the jackals right and if you've uh if you've read uh some some of the books uh what's it called uh, uh you know um confessions from uh, economic hitman you know who the jackals are <laughs> all righty uh jp morgan warns of an upcoming bear market in bitcoin didn't I do a news story last week saying that, that these guys were hiring a bunch of crypto experts? Man, two face, two face. Man, these guys have uh, you know. And when Bitcoin, you know, moons past sixty five thousand dollars, right? Nobody's gonna remember this. No one's gonna point to JP Morgan and say, "Hey, dude, didn't you say we're going into a bear market?" Mm mm. Mm mm. So they get to come out to scare the market so they can buy some cheap coins. But then we're going to also find out that they've been loading up, loading the boat whilst they're saying that, uh, you know, you need to get out. <laughs> okay. Basil Kavini proposed high risk uh, weight, weight tag for bit ta Bitcoin. Okay. So, so Basil right is you know you know they had to come up with basil one that didn't work out very well banks just couldn't do that do the stuff that the basil community wanted them to do so then they came up with basil two and they were like no we still can't do that and so okay 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 and then the banks decided to rewrite to basil three and they say oh yeah we can do that <laughs> because they wrote it <laughs> So yeah, um, th this committee has decided to uh, you know um, put Bitcoin uh, gold. They decided to put gold as a good asset into uh, as an asset that you can loan against, right? But this is going to be like you know an asset that's uh, super high risk. So gold was considered high risk, so you probably won't be able to borrow against it um, in 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 normal banking situations. So. That's what they're trying to say in this particular article here with the Basel three, uh, Basel guys, Basel committee saying high risk, high risk. And you know what? I'm just telling you, the SEC warns against Bitcoin futures fund because it's it's risky. I'm telling you again, it's risky. It's, it's, SEC is you got to listen to the SEC. Gotta listen to government when they tell you Bitcoin's risky. You should not invest. You shouldn't invest. You let it leave that investing kind of stuff for the government employees, their friends, but not for you. <laughs> <laughs> but don't worry, they'll tell you when to get in. Just not now, okay? Just not now. Wait your turn, so that they can profit and not you got it <laughs> <laughs> oh boy just another day in the uh, the light of, uh, of you know governments just you know just have no clue and especially their regulators they're just absolute clueless and they're just being do doing they're just doing what they're told right they're told to come out and say this so they're going to say it and that's it Alrighty, so uh, CP Lie, right? My favorite uh, index to look at. <laughs> it says 
Consumer prices jumped 5% in May, fastest pace since the summer of 2008. And yeah, so um, it, I could have swore there's, they wanted to keep inflation at uh, 2%, right? And so nobody's, so it's not a big deal, not a huge deal. It's transitory, transitory at 2%. Imagine what it really is, since it's a CP lie that we're looking at, right? Oh, well, let's take a look at what that really is. Well, if we use stats from, I don't know, the way we measured inflation back in the 70s and in the past, right? Because we kept changing the, the mathematical algorithm for, uh, and then even adding like all kinds of nonsense, uh, like hedonics and and uh, and substitution and all that kind of stuff. It's, it's, we're gonna we're not gonna do that anymore. And when you look at the Sato stats, you can see that. Um, look at that. Um, we are about we're almost thirteen percent, thirteen percent and rising. We haven't got hit the the absolute high right here, as you can see, um, which was almost like well, we're almost there, we're almost there. But it was probably going to, and then the, way back in the 80s, we're at 15%. We're going to get up there. We're going to get up to 15% and probably pass, surpass what we had in the 80s. It's going to be interesting um, because in the 80s, remember, when we were at 15%, um, people were going out of frenzy trying to um, get out of the dollar. In fact, uh, did you know that the, the dollar, um, the, the, the U.S. government had to, for the first time, Borrow in another currency back in the uh, in 1979. Does anybody know that? No, it's just a cool thing to know. Yeah, they the people did not want to um, to take their bonds. Their bonds were not being accepted, and so they had to borrow in Swiss francs. I think it was unbelievable, unbelievable. In order to keep the government afloat, it was crazy. So yeah, but uh, Paul Volcker, right? He managed to put uh, the inflation genie back in the bottle. He wrestled it down by increasing the inflation, the, the uh, interest rates to thirty percent. Right? Uh, unbelievable. Right? You can get a thirty-year bond at thirty percent. Just unreal, unreal. So, and that's not that's not that's not going to happen anymore. You don't think that's gonna happen. Don't even don't even consider that. Put that into your thought, because um, yeah, um, that's not gonna happen. Just as we're going to we're going to inflate until we absolutely die here. Uh, that's that's what that's what's happening, right? We're going to inflate. There's no way. And you know, I just can't believe, right? The people think that you know that. Uh, that Bitcoin is risky, right? Like these guys, these Basel guys, think Bitcoin is risky. Okay, so what's the definition of risk, right? It means that you're gonna take a loss, right? So, um, if you get a, um, uh, a negative yielding bond, which guarantees a loss, isn't that guaranteed risk? <laughs> guaranteed high risk? <laughs> I mean, I can't believe it. These guys, just jokes, man. It's just jokes. Right? The whole system is a complete joke. Alright, in closing, right, I, I want to ask you guys about this uh, particular um, cryptocurrency, right? Um, it's L-I-T-I -L Capital. I don't know. L-I-T-I Capital. I don't know what you want to call it. But, um, yeah, I'm going to be checking them out. So, if you have any information about this uh, this particular um, this particular company and what they're planning to do and uh, stuff if you've heard anything positive or negative please leave a comment in this comment section below i'd like to know and uh yeah alrighty. uh all right so that's it for today thank you all for watching thank you for participating in today's show um and remember right bitcoin's real bitcoin's here to stay and you need you need to not worry about it being risky just get some cheers <laughs>